We're here to share with you inspiring stories that bring to life all the little and big ways that people bring more love, joy, laughter, and humanness to everyday life. Our focus is the hunt for those little moments that refuel the human soul and reminds us what life is really all about. I invite you to sit back, enjoy the moments, enjoy the stories, the adventures, and the journeys. Welcome back to another episode of What the World Needs More Of. We are joined by my good friend, Dr. Akhil Patel. Sir, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jerk. I'm excited for you to be here. As always, we're going to dive right in. And big question to start with, what do you feel the world needs more of? I think what the world needs more of is uh, execution. So a lot of people have ideas. Uh, and dreams and not many people leave the comfort of their box and um, and chase them so i think i think there's a plethora of awesome ideas out in the world and we just need more people to um, leave their comfort and uh, go do it go do big things i love that and knowing you personally i know this is something you live by whether it's going after a new business idea or chasing down your dreams or, or going after uh, something that you really want in life or want to experience or create or give or share or be or do. Um, I've seen it firsthand. You, you charge on out there and make it happen. And, and I'd, I'd love for people to get to know more about you. So I, I want to start with what do you feel that your wow factor is? What makes you uniquely you? And what are some of the moments that help shape it? Well, I'd say um, I try to be as adaptable as possible. So I think that's one of the unique skills that I have. Um, I'm able to, you know, listen to patients and see, you know, as, a, as a, I'm an internal medicine doctor, I deal with 65 years um, and older in patients. And so that's called geriatric medicine. And most of my patients are lower middle income, um, live in trailer parks, some without electricity. Um, and so, you know, dealing with their medical issues is not only about what medicines to prescribe. It's also looking at their whole situation, seeing what they can afford, seeing um, if it is feasible to come and see me. If not, maybe I can get an Uber or a taxi ride for them. Maybe it's giving them free uh, insure or boost samples so that they can have some kind of meals uh, delivered to them. Mm. Sometimes it's a matter of changing their medicines from expensive copay medicines to zero cost. Sometimes it's uh, arranging with the state to provide them extra help at home. And, uh, you know, I think that approach to medicine has really uh, separated me from my counterparts in the sense that uh, patients seem to really enjoy that aspect of me in terms of being adaptable to their own needs as opposed to me forcing things upon them. I agree. You, you hear a lot of not so great stories nowadays of people just trying to max out the billing charts and get as much money as they can out of every insurance policy and and what what's the bit you know the highest paying code for whatever our procedure we just did and 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 not everyone's like that there's tons of very very wonderful humans and, and doctors out there just like you who are, who are doing great work and doing their best to, to be adaptable and really serve the client first and put their needs ahead and figure out how to really really take care of them in such a beautiful way. I'm curious, what are a couple of life experiences that helped shape that in you? So, you know, when I was younger, my grandfather actually ended up in the hospital uh, for a common cold. And, you know, he had, he, it turned out he had a mild pneumonia. And unfortunately, he didn't make it out alive. But so what happened was that mm. he was treated with the medicine he needed, antibiotic-wise, but didn't get... Uh, the right dosage of a blood thinner, uh, which most po most people in the hospital, uh, when they're when they're admitted, they get something called heparin, and that's uh, that's given to you, you know, either twice or three times a day, just as a prophylaxis or prevention of a deep venous clot. And he was given an excess dosage and ended up uh, unfortunately passing away after that hospitalization. And so, you know, that that really put a 
you know, indentation in my, in my life going forward because uh, gave me the realization that, you know, not all things uh, are in patient's control. And so if, if I'm able to help them in any way and prevent any medical errors going forward, um, I think that's, you know, that made a big impact on my life. And so everything I do now is, is impact and value oriented. So uh, I'm not, I'm not the one who chases after money, but I, I try to increase the value uh, of anything I do uh, to the to the world around me. So whether that's um, of what I'm focused on now, besides uh, geriatric medicine, is low-income senior housing. And so I have a 10-bed assisted living facility, and my goal there is to is to really provide a high-quality care with the lowest possible cost. And so to provide people who would otherwise be at home or or in not so great facilities. With a with a loving, caring uh, community around them, and so I get joy out of uh, changing people's lives for the better, and also knowing that I, I'm providing the best care um, I can deliver. That's beautiful, man. I, I love that, and I, I observed that from you, and I appreciate that about you, and I, I definitely acknowledge it, and and just say thank you from the community to have more people out there doing great stuff like that. It, it's it's admirable. Here's a question: Throughout your journey. Through everything you've seen and experienced, what's a moment that made you feel incredibly humble? Well, actually, Jarek, it was uh, a couple weeks ago. We had a patient. Uh, let's call him uh, John for for uh, patient sakes. And so he, this patient John came in. He he unfortunately wasn't on the right medicines. He was a new patient transferred to me. Um, he had something called heart failure, so his, his heart wasn't pumping as, as strong as it should. And so it was only working about 10 to 15% of what that uh, normal ejection fraction is on, on the heartbeat. And as a result of that, he, he had pretty bad swelling in his legs. He had gained about 30 pounds of water weight, so there was backup of fluid into his lungs, and he was having severe shortness of breath. And, uh, you know, as soon as he came in, I knew I could help him. So... I immediately changed his medicines and, you know, we tried to try to get this water off of him. And then I realized that, you know, these medicines were still not working. So we had to admit him to the hospital and uh, take out water through, through IV diuresis. So IV format of the medicines as opposed to uh, the pills. And he came back and he came back 30 pounds lighter in, uh, in about five or seven days. And uh, let me tell you, he was a different man. And, uh, he couldn't stop thanking the the medical team that took care of him. And, uh, you know, I think we, we really changed his life for the better. And had he not come to our clinic, I don't know if you'd be here, uh, today. And so that was a humbling experience for me to see, um, the, the result of medical advances today. And so someone like him may not have made it through that hospitalization had he been living, uh, maybe 50, 60 years ago. And so, um, having the the power of, of medicine and uh this is it's just a beautiful experience and so i was very thankful and humbled to see uh, medical care to where it is today and and to see people like him living uh when they may have not made it otherwise oh, that's awesome man I've, I've certainly had my fair share of growing up in an environment that wasn't heavy and believing in the current medical system and and all the different pills and and, and ways to treat people. But as you know, I've also had my experience of catching malaria while living in a village in, in Uganda um, and, and not wanting to take the medicine, only to get down to the point where me and the doctor had a face-off and he had to show me <laughs> 55,000 parasites per one red blood cell and say, hey, pal, it's your choice. You either got six days left to live or you're going to take the medicine. It's up to you, though. <laughs> <laughs> and and I am very thankful for modern medicine, <laughs> otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, and as, as silly as it sounds, you know, growing up in Southern California, vegetables, vegetable juice and meditation can heal so much. The common cold, maybe a headache or two, but don't take on malaria with it. It's a very silly idea. <laughs> and and it, it's beautiful to see how, you know, like you said, the modern advancements and what's available and, and how someone who 50 years ago might have just passed away at that moment can be helped with the right with the right doctors, the right medical team, and you know the the, the right journey there of, of showing them what to do, helping them get it done, and c- coming back 30 pounds lighter and being in a beautiful place. You not only changed his life, but you saved his life. That's amazing. Good work, man. 
speaking Definitely, humbly, those days make uh, make make all that studying worthwhile. So. That's right. <laughs> As humbling moments lead to awe-inspiring moments. What's a moment that left you in a moment of awe? Something that might have put your jaw on the ground and just left you feeling like, wow, whatever you saw or experienced or felt or did, it, it just left you in a pure moment of awe. Let's see, an awe-inspiring moment. Oh, well, let me, one of my patients says, you know, he's he's about uh, 97 years old, and his wife is 93 or 94, and they had one of the strongest marriages I've ever seen in my life, and so that it was pretty awe-inspiring to see how much they cared for each other, how much they loved one another, how much uh, one depended on the other, uh, the smiles that each one of them had when looking at each other. Uh, there was no contention between the two of them, and there was just nothing but love, and it's something that was definitely unique among my patient crowd and, and something I try to learn from, and uh, I'm friends with the, those patients today, and it, it's just, it was a memorable experience to see such joy, and uh, I think they were over 70 years of, of marriage, and so that's, that's something special that uh, I don't usually see. Wow, how cool. I'd love to be able to interview them someday. Hopefully I cross paths with them just to ask them for 70 plus years of marriage with that much joy and that much love and that much happiness. What's their secret sauce? <laughs> I, <laughs> I remember my wife and I were on a cruise and we met this, this lady who she had been married for many years. Her husband had passed away. She was 92 years old and fell head over heels madly in love with this man who was 90. And oh my God, goodness they were just lit up like teenagers and they were so lovey-dovey and and happy and touchy-feely and i remember we had lunch with her and her daughter who was 60 years old and and we asked the mom who was 92 years old we said you know what's the secret what's making it so amazing so special and she leaned in with a giant smile on her face and said he's very attentive to my needs and winked at us <laughs> and her daughter turned bright red and said mom oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful and it was silly and it was fun and and you know how how wonderful it is for someone to to have that kind of romance and love and and just connection with a soul if, if they find it and have the privilege of connecting but for someone to last 70 years like that how beautiful i'd love to know I'd love to, one, see that and observe it like you have, but two, I'd love to know how they did it. Um, shifting gears here a little, I'm curious, what's your greatest fear? So I heard a quote once, and I think it's applicable to my greatest fear. Uh, it would be, hell on earth would be to meet the man I could have been. Mm. So and that, that plays in my background uh, quite a bit. And so whenever I make a decision, whether that's uh, – I, you know, I ask myself, is this my greatest potential or am I being too safe with my movements? And that, you know, recently has applied to my uh, my business career. Uh, I, you know, was I feel that I've been playing it safe and very conservative. And I know I could change the world in a bigger way. And so I've made the decision of late to really focus on larger projects because, as we all know, we're, you know, we have one life to live, and and as far as we know it, no one's outlived death. So uh, it's it's one of those things that you know we have one life to live. Let's live it to the fullest and don't play it safe. So from now on, you know, I I try to do, give however much I can give to the world and hold nothing back, and to you know set my sights on on uh, true value for others as opposed to smaller thinking. And so I think that's made all the difference of. of looking at myself and trying to become the best man I could be. That's awesome. I love that. Hell on earth is to meet the man I could have been. Oof. What a feeling. What a thought. Here's a question. What are you excited about in the future? Well, Jarek, I'd like to change lower income senior care. So I've already started with my first assisted living facility, but I'd like to build a series of low-income adult living facilities and uh, independent living facilities. Not focused on profit, but more focused on delivering great value. So there's, there's uh, unfortunately, years of waiting lists for people uh, to go into low-income senior housing right now. And, you know, I'll just rewind here. There's 
most of my patients have fixed incomes of about maybe a thousand to thirteen hundred dollars a month, and when they're paying, you know, six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a month in rent, they really don't have much left over for food or electricity or water. Not to mention, you know, gas or going out with friends or you know, really enjoying life. So if I if I can provide them uh, a, a wonderful place to stay with with a good community around them. Uh, for four to six hundred dollars a month, I think that would be a game changer. And so, I think that's uh, what I'm going to be focusing on for the next uh, ten to fifteen years of my life. How cool! How cool! Uh, we've been experiencing this with my mom, um, and and she went through a couple strokes recently, and we had to go look at all the different facilities available around where she lived, and and there is a very very big difference between them, um, and and even the ones that. Uh, are, are covered aren't you know th- th- there's some that are really nice and amazing and then a lot of them require out-of-pocket e- extra expenses and they're they're very pricey uh, and then the, the ones that are covered you walk around and, and some of them are okay um, but but some of them are, are the th- you know the, the things that people have nightmares about where it's you know it's if it's the best available it's the best available at the same time it's not necessarily the place you want to send a loved one and and so like you said, to provide that to the community and make it available and make it cost effective would be really a true service to humanity. And, and especially with the growing age of population around right now and, and how many people are going to need those services as we continue. What a great project. Exactly. Areas areas that can uh, allow the, the residents to thrive instead of just, you know, waste away is, is my goal. Mm. Thriving communities. I love that. I love that. So in this next section, we're going to switch gears here. We call this one nuts and bolts, more practical, tangible, tactical things people can take and use. And and so the very first question we have is where do you focus the majority of your thoughts and time and life each day as of right now? So I'll tell you what ideally I'd like to do, and and then I'll tell you what I actually do. But uh, I've heard it said well that if you were to write down all your tasks, that you do throughout the day and put a number value to each one task. So whether that's maybe going going grocery shopping, uh, that may be like a five or $10 task uh, as opposed to making a large business decision, maybe a thousand dollar an hour task. And so you want to get as close to just doing the hundred dollar and up tasks uh, and minimizing the, you know, zero, 10, $20 an hour tasks. And ideally, you're just focusing on high value, um, high return items throughout the day. And so, you know, of course, that could also be spending time with a loved one. Uh, that could be, you know, taking care of your health. It could be eating healthy. It could be working out. It could be, um, you know, showing up in the best way possible. But you don't want to be bogged down by low, low value tasks. And so when I look at my own life uh, and schedule, I try to create high value tasks throughout the day and more thinking time. So I find myself thinking about uh, the future, how I can impact it, how I can create the most value for it um, and also align my strengths with that. So, you know, what, what would I like to do that uh, if I did that, I could create high value and did not seem like a lot of work. So I've heard it said that, you know, when your work is uh, joyful to you, it doesn't really feel like work. It feels like you're, um, you're in your best possible state and you're, you're very happy. So I think the, the best way to think about the future is to, um, you know, figure out what your goal is, work backwards and focus on, on tasks to get you there. And so, and, and just focus on the high value tasks. And now, now in today's day and age, we can hire out a lot of the extra tasks, such as like task rabbit. Um, there's fiverr.com there's, there's a bunch of websites that basically take care of any human need these days. So um, I'd say focus on the high value items. I like that. Now, in focusing on this, what would you say is one of the keys to your success in the process? Well, uh, I think this this idea of high value items has, has taken me to a new destination somewhere outside uh, my original trajectory. So if you look at my current life, you know, I'm a physician, I'm employed, I, I make X amount a year and I see this many patients, but thinking uh, in this new direction where I could potentially impact millions of lives, 
um, my trajectory has changed. So I feel like my best self could be that person to change low income senior care. And so that, that requires me to push to a new level. And, uh, you know, I think that makes all the difference, whether you live in a comfort environment or live your best self. And again, not everyone needs to, you know, end up serving millions of people. Some, some may be happy just raising a beautiful uh, family, but I, you know, if, if that is someone's decision to impact a lot of lives, then I think they they have to really analyze their own trajectory and see see what their future holds. And if they're not on course, to course correct. I like that. I like that. So the ability to analyze your trajectory, really figure out where you ultimately want to land up, amplify your vision, and, and, and step into that and course correct accordingly to make sure you're actually on track with the results. One thing we talk about a lot is um, you know, we draw a little chart and, and in the bottom left hand corner, we say this is where you are now over time passing on the bottom and, and results going up and down on the scale. We'll say in the bottom right hand corner, just straight across the bottom, we'll draw an X and we'll say, hey, this is average results, average life, average achievements, average income, average health, average love life, what average everything, which is OK. It's just average. That's why it's called average. It's normal. Um, and then we say in the very top right corner, we'll put a Y and we'll say this is the 1%. And most people go, oh. And I'm like, don't give me that ugh stuff because if you're telling me you don't have the want to have the 1% of sex on the planet, you're lying to me. And if you don't want to have the 1% of love lives and the one you don't want to be the 1% of people giving more to your community than anyone else, and you don't want to be the 1% of people who are more spiritually connected than anyone around you, then, then you're lying because everyone at some extent would love to experience some of those things. You just have to differentiate from what the media has sold us this whole 1% concept is. But but the 1% of people who give more than anybody else are a beautiful group of people. Um, so, so, you know, where do you want to be in this top right corner, this huge, massive, amazing life and results in whatever category it is you'd like to experience more of? And then you got to figure out what's the difference. And what I found is, you know, average habits will never lead you to those 1% results. <laughs> they just don't add up to that. And so what you're saying if I'm hearing you right, is not only expanding your vision to do more and reach more and help more and give more, um, but it, but it's also adjusting adjusting your actions accordingly. Like you said, stepping back and saying, hey, if I'm going to invest 10 minutes of my time into this or an hour of my time into this, it needs to be that $100 or more ROI. Otherwise, all these little natural, normal, daily things I have to do aren't going to add up to that 1% result of being able to help these millions of people in this specific situation. Very smart. Very smart. Okay, we've come to the end. Our final question here. What is one actionable tip someone listening could use to achieve or experience this kind of success in their life, to expand their vision, to do, you know, to really step it up? What's one actionable thing they could do each day to help them really experience that in their life? I'd say, you know, to to look into inside themselves and really ask what is my goal and you know if that what's my number one goal and if that's creating family then you know spend time with the family uh if it's becoming the best possible business person uh in that in a particular field then you know maybe maybe do items there action items that will take you there uh whether that's networking or meeting a mentor and and creating a plan for the future. Uh, if it's, you know, your health, then maybe get a health coach and, and really focus on the steps needed to achieve elite performance. And I think just focusing on the, the one biggest priority someone has in their life uh, can, can make all the difference. It's, it's when we have too many priorities that we end up having zero priorities. So start with one. Uh, and I think that that will create some momentum to fuel uh, achieving other successes. I love that. Focus on your one thing. What's the one priority that you have to hone in on and what does it take to actually get the result? I love that. Great tip. So thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time to share with us all. I know you're busy and got to get back to work, so we're going to let you do so. Uh, for everyone who took time to tune in, thank you so much for listening. If you like these episodes, please make sure to click subscribe. And if you know someone who needs to hear this, make sure to share it with them. We believe sharing is caring, and we like caring people around here, so make sure to share. Uh, Akil, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jared. Take care.
And for everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next episode. Thank you.